What is going on everybody? I am Brandon aka the frustrated gamer and welcome to part four of the Stanley Parable. I am off of work today. I don't know if you can see but it's an absolute blizzard out there. Uh, so I figured what better way to spend my day off of work than making part four of the Stanley Parable. In part one we basically beat the game as far as I gathered. In part two, uh, we didn't listen to the narrator, and he basically screwed with us for about 15 or 20 minutes. And then in part three, we killed Stanley. So we have been all over the map. I still think there's probably 10 more options of, of storylines that we can, we can discover. Uh, so let's get started and see where else this storyline goes. Okay, so we have nothing on the ground, no yellow line or any all of path. Toy workers were gone. Yeah, yeah, he said this about Stanley 15 times already. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do this time. I'm, I think I'm going to follow the storyline for now, and then once I get to a spot where I know I haven't gone before, I'll follow that route. I think there's a spot where I've gone upstairs every time, so maybe I'll go downstairs. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm going left because I know when you go right, the narrator... Just, he gets pissed off and he messes with you for an entire storyline, basically. Alright, so here's the conference room. I know it's going to be yeah, empty. There was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Wow, so I just saw tips on how to not get fired, and the first tip was talk less. Uh, now it's how to solve it. Oh, I didn't even get to read it. They're just clicking through them quickly. Wait, how are they clicking? I guess it's just on an automatic timer. All right. Strange company. It's a strange company. There's my favorite broom closet. I'm sure I'll be back there eventually. Here's the stairs. So he tells me to go up. I think I'm going to go down this time. Coming See where that goes. Case, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I'm going down. I am going down. Is this door open? Nope. Ooh, it's starting to get red. What is going on down here? Alright, nothing back here. I'm surprised the narrator hasn't yelled at me yet. Usually he gets mad when I don't follow his instructions. Is that car running? Why did it get so but quiet? Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during his work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy... Why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, One, two, why could he see four. his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically <laughs> behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. Was that... This is all a dream. Oh, I thought that was Stanley talking oh, for a minute. A That's him doing Stanley an impression of Stanley. To have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. No. Have to go he better not start me over. Real he better not start me over. Oh, I was I just here. Well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying. And began to gently float above the ground. <laughs> I am currently flying. I'm on the ceiling. On a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marvelled that he had still not woken up. What is going How was on? He remaining so lucid, and then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head? dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking. Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me 
thinking about how it's describing my thoughts. I don't even know what to say. I'm just gonna listen to him. And wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the oh, voice Oh, I was on, I was on the ceiling, no this doubt. This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently. Ah, uh, I'm gonna start and he over. himself to wake up. I'm gonna wake he up in my the office. The weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. Buttons with one finger. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. I am not. Don't listen to him, Stanley. Everything. Don't listen to him, Stanley. I am okay. I thought I was going to wake up in the office. Wow. I'm screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell this me I'm real. getting eerie. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Ah! I know I'm going to wake up in the office. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Huh? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed. Why didn't I just go up the stairs? Why didn't I just go up the stairs? But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go crazy after I play this game too much longer. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment... This storyline's too long! ...staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. So I killed Stanley again. I'm killing Stanley at a 50% rate right now. I've played four storylines and killed him in two of them. Ah, and we're right back to square one. We're back to square one. All right, so I'm back in my favorite room. I'm gonna try. Oh. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? I clicked accidentally. He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. Can I get out? In here, I can be happy forever. I'm stuck. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. No. Oh. Days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now. How do I get out of here? End, he will be spoken to. He will ah. be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. What happened? Okay, so that was just... 
Nothing. Okay. All right. All of his co-workers were gone. What yeah, yeah, mean? yeah. Standing All right. So I'm trying to think what else to do now. I've gone down the stairs. I've got around. There's still got to be room. None of these doors are open. When Stanley uh, came here's to my favorite room. Doors, he entered the I've door gone right there. before. It was terrible. I'm going to keep going left. I'm going to stay with the storyline. Come on. One of these doors have to be open eventually. Nothing. All right. Well, we've been here before. Yet there was not a single person here either. Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work. All the time. Office. Every day. He might find ah. an answer there. My favorite broom closet. My favorite broom closet. Is there any way to go? Oh, maybe this door's open. Executive bathroom. Nope, locked. There's a, So there's an executive bathroom? What about this one? Come on. Something be open. Stepping into his manager's office, hate those doors Stanley closing behind me. I hate it. Stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible. What is it? Two eight four five. Let's try it. Two and so the eight, boss had assigned it four, five? an extra secret. Stanley yeah, was in such got a it. rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming New Age music. Really? Really? Actually kind of nice. A little relaxation. All right, all right. I'll listen to the narrator. I'll go at his pace. I'm sorry. Just let me go Being through the uh, the fireplace. Stanley calmly oh, that was weird. Forward into the opened passageway. Thank you. Oh, I wonder if I could go down there if I jump in really quickly. Maybe that's a different storyline. Next time we die. Next time we die, I'm going to go there. Is there anything over here? Oh, what about back here? Nope. Am I just in a corner? I'm gonna get lost, aren't I? I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> Alright, I don't think that went anywhere. Alright. Well, we're not gonna do the escape path because that Stanley ended with Stanley dying. The large door that read Mind Control Facility. Not going that way. If you go that way, you die. I'm just giving you a heads up. Alright, we've been here also. No. He refused to believe it. Believe he it, Stanley. You're it. under surveillance. One of these 9,000 TV screens is you. Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Yes. Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to yes. the world? Yes. Yep. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. All right, let's explore here a little bit. Oh! Content. Walking. Eating, working, that button all do? of it monitored and commanded from this very place. Okay, the so cold reality of his past stop talking. began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For yeah, yeah. he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Sounded a little bit like Darth Vader there at the end. Once and for all. All right, mind control. I wonder if I could press that. Nope. Man, I thought I was going to be able to press that. Anyway, so there was a number five button at the end of this room. I remember that from part one, and I just saw a number three. Okay, so we got some numbers here. Let's press them into order. One. Two. All right, three was back over here. I don't, this might do absolutely nothing, but I feel like those numbers have to be there for some reason. Here's three. Now, where's four? Four is the one that I haven't found yet. Ooh, I haven't been down here before. Alright, I guess that's nothing. Where's number four? Number four has got to be around here somewhere. 
That's number five. Where the hell's number four? All right, so we got one, two. Oh, is that it up there? Is there even a, a spot that I can go up? Can I go up those stairs? All right, so we got one, two, three. I'm going to go up these stairs and hit number four and then finally hit number five. And hopefully something exciting will happen. Alright, here's number four. And now all I have to do is hit five. Alright, here we go. Five. Come on, do something. Ah, oh, are you serious? Nothing? It did nothing? Ah, oh, we're gonna keep going. Mind controls idle, awaiting input. All right. Well, last time I said off, he found the source and I won the power. game. He knew it was his duty. I'm clicking the on this time. I am clicking to on to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Not doing it, buddy. On. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? Yes, I did. After they kept you enslaved all these years, you yep. go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you want? Loading mind control, control systems. Oh, Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. What? I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, ah. and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated what? without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are said to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun. So do I leave? Stanley. It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your Where star do I go? Now. Do I just Shape run? It to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Uh, Mere uh, moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. I don't know what to do. More time to talk about you. I'm going to try to hit the buttons in a row, and hopefully that'll turn it off. What all this means. I barely know where to start. One. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. Two. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. Oh, this guy's sick. The narrator's in on it. I knew it. The narrator's in on it. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. This guy is sick. This narrator's sick. Swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this though, this version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's I'm scared! I'm honestly scared right now of this narrator. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. That but didn't I'm do anything. I'm enjoying this so much. You know, oh. to hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stan. Time doesn't grow on trees. Where do I go? Oh, dear me. What's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going? Or yes. Or what you're supposed to be doing right yep. now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? Absolutely. I mean, look at you. That's what Running I thought. from button to button. Screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, uh, or maybe this big red button. Do they just mean or nothing? This door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One sold? Do you have any They'll save. Come on! purpose in this place here? <laughs> oh, that is creepy. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still planning instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. Incorrect. To see you made humble. Incorrect. It's not a challenge. It's a tragedy. 
you wanted to control oh, I'm terrified what's gonna happen to me I'm going to destroy it first so you can't take a look at the clock Stanley that's 30 seconds you have left to struggle 30 seconds until a big okay okay what do I do oh there's a big red button would you cling desperately to your friend that didn't do anything he said it wasn't gonna do anything and it did not choice oh everything's shaking oh don't it's all the same to me Oh, I hate this narrator. He's a terrible person. I'm laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. I think I just blew up. I just blew up. So now I'm killing Stanley at a 60% rate. I've tried five different scenarios and I've killed Stanley three out of the five times. Am I going to be right back in the room? Right back in the room. I, I... That is it for part four of the Stanley Parable. Um, I'm probably going to make one or two more. Uh, I'm going to do a little research so I'm not just running in circles this time. I'm going to find out something that I could do that'll be different. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like the video. Please subscribe to my channel. And aside from the Stanley Parable, if you guys have any games that you would like to suggest me to play, mention them in the comments below and I can almost guarantee you, if you suggest a game, I will play the game. I'm always looking for new games to play. Stanley Parable Part 4 is over, and I will see all of you guys in the next video, Stanley Parable Part 5. Have a good one.